Got one already. Got him. That's why I throw this thing. Got him. Got him. That could be a big one. Oh, it's a giant. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. You catch some big ones? What is up, MFers? Got him, Jack, for today. Hooked the boat up, headed away from home a couple hours. I'm back at the lake that is super clean, fat ass grass where I caught the eight plus pounder on the swim bait the other day. And we barely fished it. We were only here for a couple hours. We didn't even explore that much. Today we're gonna break it down a little bit more. Hopefully show you guys a couple things to help you go catch some fish on the big baits. I mean, I shouldn't even say that. I got a prototype bait though. I think we'll for sure catch them on, but we're gonna try to catch some behemoths. There's double digits in here. Also, I have the best fans in the world. I just talked to a young man at the boat ramp for like 15 minutes telling me about how he watches the channel. He, he was out fishing today. He was telling me how he did today. You guys always give me so much love no matter where I'm at, online, in person, whatever. But yesterday, something truly crazy happened. One of my fans reached out and sent me one of the hardest baits to get, super, super expensive bait for free. Yeah, for free. So I had to go out and I'm gonna hopefully catch some fish right now on that bait. I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a second. Well. I don't like to fish history that much because that usually gets you burned, but I'm just gonna go hit fish where I caught the old big last time. Nice little roadbed spot, a little high spot that comes up here. Let me show you the bait that, that my man sent me though. If you guys aren't familiar, this is the Tiny Clash. This thing is, I don't know, I've seen it for two, three, four hundred dollars on eBay, but um, very unique bait that we can modify a lot of different ways. I'm gonna start off with that, uh, that prototype glide, that, that six cents one, because that's what they were eating the other day. But I think this little bait, this little crank down, this TK, is gonna get bit. It's actually what uh, my man Jay was using when we were fishing a couple weeks ago together. Like I said, for now, let's see if we can draw some on this little gliding bait. It's hard for you guys to tell this, but underneath the water, all the way out here even, there's badass hydrilla. And we're supposed to have some clouds finally moving in, some rain, some storms and stuff today. And I thought I should come out here today with these low light conditions, things could get crunk. Now, last week when me and Casey were here, it was 100 plus degrees, slick, calm, and sunny. Different conditions completely, obviously. So we'll have to see how that affects these fish. I'm sure it'll position them different and they'll act different. So who knows? And it rained a bunch last night. So once again, who knows? Got one already, got one already, first spot. Yes, freaking eat the glide here. I don't know what kind of calls those are in the background you're hearing there, it's kind of creepy, but look at that. Already got one on the damn boat, on the damn glide bait. Sorry for all the, the dams in there, but. <sighs> first time over that road bed, had two chase it. That one, one was chasing it, then that one saw it, and went right up to it. Boom, on the board. You bet. Well, that's not a small alligator. At all. Alligators like glide baits. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Not even scared. Not even a little. Got him. Got him. Oh, it's not as big as he feels. I can see him. He's hooked on the side of his face. <laughs> Still fun, man, that fish was so hot on it. Fish haven't been, I don't know, haven't been just on fire. And they haven't been really set up like I thought they would be, look at that. I mean, two pound fish, nine and a half inch bait. But they haven't been set up like they should be. So I kind of threw down this gut, which is a great place to throw a big glide bait over the top of, if you guys see what I'm talking about. You know, generally you'd fish this point, you fish the grass edge, you throw a frog way back in there. But out over the top, the, the grass, as you can see, tops out um, about four feet below the surface and about eight to nine feet of water. So you can throw this big glide bait and draw them out from, from the grass and from the distance from the sides. They can see it from so far away in this clean water. So maybe that's something we'll have to do a little bit more of, just kind of fire down the middle where it kind of makes a little drain in there. All right, we need to go look for some. Solid amount of followers, but they don't seem to be the right size. So we need to go find some of the right size. Get in here. Yeah, bud. Deep guy. Ah, damn it. 
wasn't a big one man that thing came out of 22 feet of water watched him fly up and chase that swim bait god dang that's crazy they can come that far that's why i throw this thing it doesn't get down super deep i could wait him but they will come so far to get this bait because that wide action i don't know if it's something about the action the noise the profile but they freaking come get it okay okay that's badass just came out to the middle of the damn lake i don't even know if i'm supposed to show you guys this man i probably shouldn't show it to you a little prototype rig system we're working on got crushed it right off the top get it get it you're big so hot oh he popped it god dang it look at that four followers right there i hate that you pull them all the way to the boat and then you gotta wait for them to reposition i'm back where i started i don't know deep grass a bunch of little fish popping my spinner bait popping my jerk bait i know there's bigs up here so i think i'm gonna focus the rest of the day up a little bit shallower oh <laughs> oh these fish are so hot on this thing they're just not getting the hook right they are slamming this one bait though today i cannot complain i'm fishing along a drop off here it's actually an old road bed and there's a grass line off the side i mean it's just perfect everything's textbook for where these bass would set up it's on the way out of a spawning pocket main lake just has not been the deal at this lake either time i've been here which doesn't make a lot of sense to me Come on, Ben. Yeah. Oh, shit. What did we catch? Oh, God. Oh, I saw that fish on Panoptics got so hot on it. And I was like, ooh, that's a different looking mark than the little three pounders that have been chasing this constantly. It was a garfish. <laughs> cool, I, I guess. I notice them in here everywhere, and that's actually a good thing. You ever see gar in your area where you're fishing? Sometimes they can be a nuisance, and there can be too many of them, but that means there's bait. So especially if you're, you're in a lake or something that doesn't have bait just everywhere, and you're looking for bait in, in good areas where the bass would go around the bait, gar aren't a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Got him. Got him. That could be a big one. That could be a big one. Uh, he's not that big. I'm just going to ski him. I think that's the biggest we've caught all day. He just wants to ski, guys. <laughs> I saw him get so hot. He saw this bait from a distance. That's just a mad little beautiful clean water fish. Look how dark that thing is. Been living up there in that clean grass. Mm-hmm. Damn, just fishing it over the top of the... This guy still hasn't even flopped yet. I don't know what the hell his deal is. Hey, you all right, bro? Hmm. All right, well. Well, there he took off like crazy. I know, I'm cheating using pan optics, but that was pretty cool. As soon as my bait hit the water and I started moving it, I see this blur like 80, 90 feet away just start hauling ass. And I figured he was on my bait, and he was. Usually when you see them that far out and it's that big of a mark and they're moving that much, it's a gigantor, but hey, I'll take it. Hey, it's a lot of bites, a lot of follows on the glide bait. Cannot hate it. I want to pick up that tiny clash, but these fish are reacting so good to the glide bait. I'm having a really tough time putting it down today, but there will be times where we take out the tiny clash. Don't worry about that. So far, been a super fun day out on the water because I'm getting a ton of bites throwing this little prototype swim bait it's gonna be released soon um the thing just flat out catches fish this is the color casey painted me and it's about got no paint left on it pretty much just the top got a little bit of blue glimmer on the bottom left but um looks like a big white shad i don't think it has to look like 
a whole lot because I think if they see it, the, the action is just gonna draw them in. I guess it's kind of deceiving because I haven't boated that many fish, but man, I'm seeing so many and getting bit by so many. I think they're just, they're popping at the head and then the big ones just aren't quite committing to it today, which is, that's how swim bait fishing goes. I mean, there's just days where sometimes you don't get any bites, sometimes you don't get any follows, but at least with pan optics, I'm able to see the ones that are following my bait that I don't necessarily see down in the water because it seems like once it gets to about 25, 30 feet away from the trolling motor, I don't know if it's the, the transducer pinging or what, but those fish are kind of swerving it and not biting at that point. But the crazy thing for me is just like seeing where these fish are setting up this time of year right now that I never would have really known without having this forward facing sonar. And that is, I mean, you pull in a pocket that looks like this. So we got the main lakes out there and then we got this pocket, we got some secondary points, all the way in the back of it back there, we got lily pads, we got high spots, we got more pads, we got reeds, we got a whole grass line. I mean, in the past, I'd be throwing my, my glide bait down the grass line, um, I'd be dragging some secondary points, I'd be flipping the grass edge, I'd be throwing my frog way up in the pads, probably since there's so many pads, I'd be throwing it, you know, in the far back of the creeks or when those saddles come up and make high spots. But today, I'm, I'm noticing all the fish are out here right where the boat is right now. They are in the middle, they're in these bowls. I don't know if it's because it's super hot outside and it has been for a while or what, but these fish don't want to be out on the main lake, they don't want to be on the main lake points or anything like that, they want to be down in the grass and ambushing directly in like the center of this ditch in the bowl right there they want to sit there in the grass and ambush up they don't want to get on the edges i don't know it's educational for me and hopefully you guys can learn something from it too i guess the the point is you know if it's if it's super clean water and you got this big glide bait like this don't be afraid to explore some of the inside ditches in the middle of some of those coves even some of these that are 15 20 feet deep those fish are coming firing right off there especially this time of year when they're super super active they're not afraid to come move so so far so good we just need to get that one big one Oh my God, come on. I need to swap hooks on this damn thing. Shit, freaking biggins out there bumping it all day. God dang it. Shit, these ST36s I got on here are not what's gonna come stuck on the bait. They're usually good hooks, but those points are super, super fine and needle points. So they do roll and they get ground down a little bit. I do have a uh, file in here, but I've been too busy fishing and not freaking taking the time to sharpen them up like a smart human being, you know, the usual. Two good ones on at that time and I f***ed it up. Switched up to the uh, Quattro size one on. These guys are sticky. Four points on them. Needle point, just like the ST36, but didn't have any more ST36 in the box, so Quattros are good too. Usually a good hook for when they're swatting at it like this. Get it. Got him. Got him. That's a better one. Come here, bud. That's not a better one at all, but man, is that fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, bud. Long, skinny Juan. Juan is too skinny. There needs to be more bait. Badass, so. All right, yeah, the quattro's work. I'm starting to worry there for a second. I missed a couple more bites on it, but I think it's just the, it's on the fish, not us. Sick. Right over the top of that. Hydrillus. I don't know what's going on with the size today. We haven't seen the Gigantors. I think it's been swerved by some bigger ones on pan optics that I've seen follow it. But like I was saying earlier, that's just how it goes swim bait fishing sometimes. But one way it doesn't go swim bait fishing a lot of times is having this many fish commit to a big bait like this. So I cannot hate it. Plus it's like 103 degrees and muggy right now out here in the damn jungle. I'm glad I can catch something. Doing any good? Any big ones? Yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate it. You catch some big ones? Yeah. Nice. Good luck. I appreciate that. Thank you. So I don't know if you guys caught that, but that was a, the way things should be handled on the water especially this time of year fishing offshore 
that guy saw me fish by here three different spots close to him and i was looking over here at him because i wanted to get on the spot obviously and as soon as he picked up his uh, trolling motor and started idling away he stopped and said if you want to come out there and fish with me just let me know man you're totally free to do that which was super freaking cool of him and then he kind of told me he'd been catching some fish here this morning a lot of two and three pounders but i've seen him here since i got to the lake so probably not going to throw a lot of conventional stuff like i saw he was throwing a crankbait and uh probably not going to drag much either until it's the last resort but i'm gonna throw a big swim bait and see if we can get a better quality fish than the two and three pounders he's been catching totally cool that guy to do that he didn't have to tell me that by any means but not just being a dick i think he appreciated that i didn't come in on him because i could have i could have fished shower on the point until he was done fishing out off the edge of it but i wanted to give him a space and he was cool to me in return Oh, it's a giant. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Okay, yep. I don't know why she just came right up to the boat. That is not a small fish. I've been scanning around this point with pan optics trying to find something that looked like this girl right here. And it's been a barren wasteland. Finally get way out off the tip of it. Look at this fish. She's just not a healthy girl. Giant frame. Giant, giant frame. Long fish. Not doing great though. No wonder she barely showed up on Panoptic. She didn't put out much of a profile, but look at that damn fish. That's like a 24 inch bass. It's, I don't know, five pounds. Look at that head on it. That's crazy. Well, that was strange. When I saw that one's head come up, I was like, yeah, that's a eight to 10 pounder. And then I'm like, oh, look at the head. And then I was like, oh, huh. <laughs> All right, then. Get this girl back, like I said. She wasn't doing that well. She kicked off strong. Well, that turned out to be a pretty badass day on the water. Didn't get any mega giants, but going out and catching them on a swim bait, especially the one that we've been working on with six cents, did not suck. And of course, got that one long slender fella out there offshore um, once again. Awesome of that dude to let me come fish that spot. Totally cool about it. There's so many confrontations on the water and it seems like everyone wants to be super dramatic and show the negative side of fishing and offshore fishing with people coming in on each other and not knowing how to use proper fishing ethics all the time. I thought that I'd bring to light something that uh, was how you should handle it. There needs to be more examples like that where that guy knew I wanted to fish that spot. He could tell by the way that I was fishing some of the spots around him and fishing near him. And that guy also knew that we could have both fished that spot and just been probably 100 yards away from each other. But there was kind of a mutual respect because I didn't get close to him while he was there. So we came over, told me it was totally cool if I see him there the rest of the day um, to just hop on out there with him. So props to you my man so for you guys that watched the pond video where we dumped all this crawfish in the other day um, I was kind of worried honestly that a bunch of them wouldn't survive or make it and so they'd be dead all over on top of the pond or on the shore or something like that haven't seen a single one so that is badass we just got a new food source in here and I think those fish are gonna freaking blow up here pretty soon also probably noticed in this video wearing the new waterland shades got this fruity ass flower hat on which it's hot outside, it's summer. I'm gonna wear it to the beach this weekend for 4th of July. I'm pretty freaking jacked about that. A um, bunch of new hats and a bunch of new frames available from Waterland. I'll link those at the top of the description. If you wanna check those out, that's our brand. Something we're really proud of and it's been growing like crazy. So we're so thankful for all you guys that support Waterland, Melican Fishing, Six Cents, everything else that we do. Thanks for watching this one too. And my first, I'll catch you very soon. Bye.